Hello everyone, Matt from Model Minutes here. Welcome back to the workbench and the first episode of my new Build With Me series. So what am I building today? I'm building the 172nd scale Hawker Hurricane Mark 1 starter set. Well, this is technically a gift set, but effectively it's the same thing. So why this particular model? Well, a little while ago I put a vote out on my channel and the majority of you wanted to see this particular one. So if you'd like to be able to take part in voting in the future, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss those polls. This video is going to be a little bit different to my normal build videos in the sense it's going to be a little bit long form, it's going to be a little bit off the cuff and it's going to have a slow pace so that if you wanted to build this kit or a similar kit, then you have the opportunity to do it at the same pace. It's also going to be in a number of parts just to make it a bit easier to follow along. So the first episode today I'm looking at preparing the kit, what we get inside and then starting on some basic assembly. But this series is going to be perfect for beginners because the skills and techniques here are going to be quite accessible to anyone. So without any further ado let's get into this build. So starting off with the kit itself, we've got the starter set version here. Now if you're brand new to model kit building, you're going to want to take a good look at the information on the box and also be aware that there are painting and transfer or decal placement instructions on the back. Not every uh, model kit manufacturer does this, they sometimes just put it on the instructions on the inside, but be aware of where the information is that you're looking for. This particular kit is a skill level one. Now, this is a skill level that the company, Airfix, have determined this kit to be. So they're saying it's one of the easier kits in the range for being one of the hardest. But take that with a pinch of salt because obviously people find things uh, difficult in different ways. Airfix do, however, have these flying hour tokens on their boxes, which if you cut that out and keep, you might be able to redeem it against more kits if you become a member of the club. So check out their website for more information on that. So without any further ado, let's get this box open and see what we're met with. So the first thing out is the instructions. What you need to do with these is ensure that you've read these all the way through before you begin building. That's to make sure that you completely understand what you're going to be doing. There's a lot of uh, information there. But the main part you want to pay attention to are the exploded diagrams showing you where the different parts go. Make sure you've read these. Each manufacturer does theirs slightly differently. I quite like the Airfix ones because they tend to be quite clear and easy to follow. And here we've got our parts. The numbers and letters in circles are the part number and then the number just with the arrow there is the paint color. So Airfix does quite a good job of telling you what parts should be painted which color. And it's up to you whether you paint them before you build them or if you build them and then paint them but depending on the, on the parts so like here for example painting these parts might be a little bit easier to do before you glue them onto the model rather than doing it afterwards over here we've got some transfers that need to be put inside of the cockpit and to be brutally honest I have built this kit before and it's not too it's not too hard to do so hopefully it shouldn't take too long you should be able to build this within a day really there we go, so just make sure that you read these instructions and if you want to write on these instructions and put more information on there just to help you along then feel free, this is, this is your kit, do what you want with it. I am going to be going off uh, the instructions a little bit and then I'm going to be doing my own thing as well, like here for example it says put your, cockpit, uh, put your pilot in the cockpit at the end, well to be brutally honest I think it would be easier to put him in the cockpit much earlier before we put the fuselage together. So. You know, think ahead, is it gonna be easy to do that now or is it gonna be easy to do that later? Like here, for example, at step 19, you could build this right at the beginning if you wanted to because it's a separate assembly. So, you know, you will find your own building style as you go through. So another thing we get are called decals or transfers. Um, these are not stickers. A lot of people, I see it in uh, like forums and on Reddit, 
people say, oh, I've got to put the stickers on, and they're not quite sure what to do with these. Um, they don't peel. You can't peel them off like stickers and stick them on. They're not self-adhesive. So there is a specific way that these work, and that is to soak them in water and then apply them carefully like that. FX uses a brand called Cartograph to make their uh, decals, and they are absolutely fantastic. You shouldn't have any issues with these at all when you apply them to the model. Other companies can be uh, not as high quality, and you might have different struggles, but for those brands, I, I suggest you take a look at some of my other build videos. But more on those when we get to them. Also included in this particular kit is a brush. We've got a number two Humbrol synthetic brush that will need uh, soaking in water just to free up the bristles. But generally, these Humbrol brushes are quite good. Although, being said, you might want to get some more brushes before you begin. Um, it doesn't really matter what brand, just get the best quality that you can afford. Um, I've got some older ones here, some bigger ones for covering off larger areas, some fine ones, anything that you think you might need, for example. What's this one over here? There we go, that's a slightly bigger one. So a fine detail brush is great for small details, and then a larger brush like this is good for your large areas. Included in this starter set are some glue and paints. So we've got four paints included. These are acrylic, so you can wash your brushes with water. And then this is a uh, poly cement here. This is the glue. It's not um, a particularly safe glue. It can be quite toxic, so be very careful when you're using this. And the way this works is it actually melts the uh, plastic parts together. I will be using these during the build, but I'm also going to be using some more paints uh, these are also from starter sets, purely because I just want to build mine to a slightly higher standard. So it doesn't really matter what brand of paint you get. So if you've got Vallejo or Humbrol or Tamiya, just get the ones that are available in your local model shop. But I've got a good selection there. I've got some uh, cockpit color, silver, yellow, a skin color for the pilot. I've got sort of a bronze color here, which I'm gonna use for the uh, engine exhaust later on, blue for the pilot's uniform, and then I've got a satin and a matte varnish as well, just to go over the top to help uh, give a better look to the model when it's finished, along with the, the four basic colors there. I think these are all the ones I'm going to use for this build, but obviously if I use any extras as I go through, I'll let you know what they are. Whilst we were talking about the glue, one thing I, I forgot to mention is that, again, if you're in your model shop and you're looking at getting some more paints, you might as well pick up some more glue. So you can get the uh, hum Humbrol Precision Poly. This has got a needle applicator tip, he says, if you can get the lid off, there we go. Um, this is just much easier to apply to the model because it's got that applicator. This is a bit more difficult um, because it's got a big nozzle and it's a bit like, uh, almost like toothpaste. It's more of a gel rather than a liquid. Um, Ravel make their own one like this and this is quite good, I use this all the time. And if you're feeling particularly um, into your models, Tamiya Extra Thin, that's a really good cement because it's this liquid, it's a really thin liquid, it's almost like water, obviously it's not water, it's quite toxic, but um, it has this applicator brush and it runs into all those little gaps and things. So for the most part, I'm going to be trying to use this for building the uh, model so that if that's all you've got, you know that it's possible. But if you feel like spending a little bit more extra money, these are very good products worth investing in. So with uh, that preliminary part out of the way, let's look at the plastic parts. So quite common with a lot of uh, plastic model kits, we've got a number of sprues. So the sprues are these plastic frames. When these are made, they are done through injection molding. So they'll have a mold and they'll literally melt plastic into it and they'll inject that straight into the mold. And it runs all the way around the outside of the mold in these little uh, channels and then forms the plastic parts. This helps give a good uh, degree of detail and um, saturation of the plastic throughout the mold. On the back here, you might see that these sort of little holes or divots here. These are not part of the actual detail of the model. These are called ejector pin marks. So how do they get the mold out? Uh, how do they get the plastic out of the mold when it's, when it's hard? Well, they have to use some pins that stick through the mold and pop it out. So that's what these are. If they are on your um, parts 
and you don't like the look of them, you can use some filler and sand, sand them smooth. But to be brutally honest, Airfix normally molds their kits in such a way that you can't actually see them on the plastic parts. As is quite common with a lot of model kits, the plastic parts are numbered and that corresponds to your instructions. So what you need to do is identify the correct one, snip it off and then use that for your model. In this particular kit we've got four sprues, we've got a smaller one here and then some larger ones which contain all of the parts of our model. And the Airfix Hurricane is a very nice model, there's not much flash which is extra plastic which is seeped out. So here there is a little bit of flash sticking out on this wing, that plastic isn't supposed to be there, that's just seat between the two mould joins and that will need to be removed later on to give a much cleaner looking model. But generally speaking, Airfix does quite a good job and they don't have much flash. So we've got the four gray plastic sprues and then over here we've got one which is made of clear. And that is for our cockpit canopy, our landing lights and another light here underneath the body of the aircraft. Have to be a little bit more careful with um, these because poly cement tends to cause them to um, fog up so I might use a different glue for that when we come to do clear parts later. But with that all out of the way that is effectively the introduction to what you get inside your kit and what you can expect along with a little bit of a description about what each thing is. So what's the very first thing we're going to do? Well I think the first thing we should do is give these all a wash. Now you might be asking why do I need to give them a wash? Well, as mentioned previously, when these are molded, you can um, feel on occasion that they use a, uh, it's sort of like a grease, it's called a release agent. They spray this inside the mold, just like when you bake cakes at home, you put butter inside of your, um, your cake tin to stop the, the cake from sticking to it. So they do the same thing with the plastic. So when they mold this, this release agent's still on the model to help it pop out when it's, when it's cooled but that is still on there. They don't wash them before they give them back to us. So it might be a good idea to wash that off. The reason is because if you try and put paint on your plastic now, it won't stick as well. It might run off the top because obviously this release agent is on there and it might stop it from sticking because that's the whole point of it. That's the whole point of the release agent. So what I'm gonna do is get myself some warm water with some washing up liquid and I might even drop uh, some vinegar in there just to help remove that release agent. So here we go, we've got some warm water, not too hot because if it's too hot it could melt the plastic, so it's just warm with some washing up liquid or as I think our, our friends across the pond say some dish soap and I will pop in just a few drops of vinegar just because the acid in the vinegar can help to break down anything that might be on top of the plastic. And all I'm going to do is use an old toothbrush Obviously don't use a toothbrush that you're using because that will not go well for your teeth, but use an old toothbrush. Uh, this is actually a toothbrush that I got specifically for modeling. It was only like a pound in the shops. And just simply give them a wash. Obviously if you're using a sink to do this, ensure that you keep your plug in. Do not remove the water until you have checked that all of the plastic parts on your sprue are still there. Washing your parts could knock them off of their plastic sprues. And if that happens, and they're small, they will go down your plug hole and you won't have them anymore. So word to the wise, always use a plastic pot just like I'm doing here. Because if you do knock any off, you can check at the bottom of the pot before you put that water down the drain. So all I'm doing here, as you can see, is just giving them a quick clean, helping to remove anything that might still be on there, giving a nice clean surface, which hopefully the paint and the glue will stick to. Once I've done that to all of the sprues, including the clear one, I'm going to just leave them on the towel until they're dry. You could, if you wanted, use a hairdryer or a fan to help speed up the process. But again, if you've got that, that hairdryer on a really hot setting, you run the risk of melting the plastic. And the other problem there as well is that you could cause dust and um, 
little fibres, little particles from the air to be act actively blown onto the surface of the model and you don't really want that because that will not give you the best paint finish later on when we come to build this so just be be careful with that cool so i will see you again when i finished washing all of these plastic parts and they are completely dry cool so with our parts now washed and mine are probably about 90 percent dry because i'm just so impatient and i just love to crack on um, we're going to think about getting these parts off the sprue. So there are three main, there's three, three main ways of doing that. The first way is to wiggle them backwards and forth until they snap off of the um, sort of the gates here. But I wouldn't recommend doing that because you could take off bits of plastic from the actual parts that you don't want to do, and then you could leave holes in your model. So although it's possible. Uh, it's probably not uh, the best idea. Uh, the second method is to use a sharp knife. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate this on these parts here because I need these for step one, which is building the landing gear, and or the landing gear bays as it as it is. So you'd simply snip them off like that. It's it's not particularly difficult, but obviously make sure you're working safely with a knife. Whilst you're doing this, you need to make sure that you are correctly identifying the parts that you need because they can be split across the various sprues. So snipping them off like that, you saw that one pinged off a bit. I've got some excess plastic there, which I will simply just snip off with my knife. There we go, that's gone. And a bit more here, which again, I'll snip that off because that shouldn't be there. Brilliant. So that's the second method. The third method that I actually prefer most of the time, without dropping all these paintbrushes on the floor, is using a set of snips. So normally you can find snips and a knife together in a sort of beginner's tool set in your model shop or online. And my advice again is to get the best ones that you can afford and only use them for the job that you're meant to be using them for. So these snips I'm only using to cut plastic parts off of the sprues because if I start using them on other things, you end up damaging the blades and then they don't give you a nice clean cut anymore. So for, for this one, I also need the lower wing surface. So I'm just gonna come up against the edge and gently snip it. It's just quite easy. You are gonna have a little bit of a mark left over from where you've cut it, a little bit of excess plastic, but we will fix that imminently. There's a really simple way. There we go. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna take a sanding stick. This is a nail file, in essence. It's it's just, I literally bought this in the shops in the sort of health and beauty aisle, and it's just a nail file. You use them to sand down your nails. So going along here, I can see the little areas, like here, where the sprue was attached to it. And all I'm gonna do is just simply sand it off, make it nice and smooth. Be careful though that you don't sand off too much material and that you don't remove the nice details that we've got there. So what I'm gonna do is go and do that to every single part which I have removed from the sprue and get rid of those um, unsightly marks. Don't forget that your, your nail file does have two sides. It's got like a rough side and a finer side. So start with the rough and then flip it over to the finer side as and when you need it. So I will see you shortly when I've got all of these parts ready to go. So these parts are ready to go now. I've got the lower wing, the back of the landing gear bay, a wall of a landing gear bay, and the two sides of the landing gear bay, and this sort of um, gas cylinder. I think it's for like the hydraulics. So what I'm going to do now is use my poly cement to glue these things together. And I'm also gonna use a cocktail stick, again, something I found in the shops, to put my glue on because it's quite hard, like if I try and get this in the right place, oh, there's loads coming out already. So like a paper towel is going to be very beneficial here to catch any excess. If I try and do fine blobs, oh, it's just so much, there's just so much coming out straight away. Tiny amounts, it's just so difficult to do. So I'm gonna put some on my cocktail stick and then my cocktail stick can be my applicator. There we go, there's some on there, some on there, fantastic. So another tool that I don't think I've mentioned yet. And if you've got them, then great. If you haven't got them, then it's not a massive problem. 
and that is a pair of tweezers very handy for getting these tiny little details on so you're looking for those alignment marks there and we're going to get those lined up on the part I think did it go on like that or does it go on the oh hang on we'll check the instructions so I've put the glue in the wrong place it actually goes on these mounting pins you wouldn't believe that I've built one of these before would you let's try it a bit blob blob there we go careful be careful with your glue also be careful uh, that you don't get it on your hands Gluey finger marks on your model is not something that you really want. If you are a bit prone to that, maybe wearing some uh, disposable gloves would be handy. There we go. There we go. He's in place now. See, that's quite a fiddly job, that one. Cool. So that's the first bit. So what I'm going to do now is put that on my lower wing surface. Run some glue along there. There we go, and then that goes that way around with this notch bit sticking up and it slots, there's the little slots that it should go into. He says much. Why is it so fiddly today? Some of these parts do need a little bit of playing around with just to get them in the right place. And they might need a little bit of pressure to help them stay where they need to glue as the as the glue sort of holds them there there we go that's better so next bit is to add these parts so that one there and that one there they are going to go here and here so again a little bit more glue cocktail stick might be handy i've got a bit of excess glue there there's too much on that bit so we'll get that off and we'll use that on that side there and then this one goes there, let's get you back in frame, that one goes there, like that, and then this one goes on the other side, like that. And then at the back here, we have the very last component that I cut off, goes on there. That is the landing gear base done. Just pressing it down, make sure it sticks. And that is the landing gear bay done. Uh, it's quite good, I like the way that Airfix have designed this one. Uh, this is the normal viewing side and you can see we've got some nice detail in the way that they've designed it. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So the next thing to do is to put the other wing half on top. You remember on this one I said there was a bit of extra excess flash. So again, simply all I'm going to do is uh, snip that off or cut it away very carefully. And then I'm going to sand off the excess. Any areas like that quite easy to fix. So with that done we are now ready to join the two halves and it's always a good idea to check the alignment before you actually put any glue on them because if you have any issues now would be the time to spot them and try and fix them. But I think we are going to be okay as long as we apply a bit of pressure when we put it on. There we go that clicks in. There's little uh, locating holes and plugs which helps you get everything lined up correctly. So as long as everything lines up correctly, you should be good to go. So we're gonna just run some glue carefully around the edges. One of those earlier products I mentioned with the needle applicator, this is like the perfect time for that. There we go, so that's done. We can put some actually on this bit as well, just to help it all stay together. There we go. Right, that's done. Let's get it lined up. Watch you don't get glue on your fingers. Because fingerprints on the model would not be attractive. Clip it together. And then you might need to apply some pressure just to make sure it stays together as it dries. You can use clothes pegs if you've got some. They're quite a handy tool. Just clip them onto the wings and keep them together. So you'll remember earlier, I said if you manage to get some of this extra thin cement, you know, this is the sort of step where it, which it's perfect for. I'm going to demonstrate how to use it. So if you wanted to consider getting some, then, you know, this is how, this is like the perfect point for it. So you just simply drop it on the areas that you want it to go to and it just runs into the gaps. If you don't have extra thin, don't worry. You don't need it. It just helps give a slightly better join. You can very realistically build this model without extra 
products if you wanted to. Again, it's your model, so build it any way you want. If you want to paint it pink with purple spots, then feel free. I would actually like to see that. I'd like to see someone do that. So if you've done that, let me know. There we go, so it just gives a nice, a nice join between the two parts. And then when it's dry, again, you can give those joins a nice little sand, just to smooth everything off, because we've got a little bit of overhang there. There we go, so I'm just going to run my sanding stick along these seams, just to marry them up a little bit more, make them look a bit neater, and sort of hide the fact that they have been glued together. Just to give a neater look to the model. With the uh, wings now joined, I'm going to glue the cockpit floor part into its holes on the bottom of the wing. It's quite interesting how Airfix have designed this kit because some elements of the cockpit are glued directly to this, whereas other parts are glued inside of the fuselage halves, which is sort of a more traditional way of doing it. So that bit in there now, and I think it might be time to start thinking about painting. To start with, I'm going to use this Humbrol 78. It's not included in the set. This is an extra paint, uh, which came with a different set. This is a more cockpit green color. I know that in the instructions, it tells you to paint it with the green that's included, but that's more of a camouflage green rather than a cockpit green. So 78 is more of a cockpit green color, and I don't have very much of this paint left. It's a bit running out, but that's not a problem because I'm going to use some of this Tamiya acrylic paint thinner. You can use water to thin down your acrylic paints, but I like to use this because it works to um, sort of dissolve the paint a little bit. So what I'm going to do is take some drops and pop them in there. That's about four drops there. And now I need to give it a good mix. So I'm gonna take my cocktail stick and make sure I get all of that paint off the lid and in the pot and then give it a good, a good mix. Hopefully there'll be enough paint in here to do all of the internal cockpit areas. Thinning your paint will help give a better finish. If you leave the paint quite thick, so you haven't added any water or thinner, it may result in the paint leaving like brush marks when it dries because it's almost like applying a paste rather than a paint as such. It's a bit, bit of a strange thing to realize when you come to modeling. You think to yourself, why are these paints not ready to go straight out of the pot? And that was something that I didn't realize initially. So there you go, that's more of a cockpit green color. But yeah, sadly it is something that this hobby has is that some products are not ready to go straight out of the pot. So with that paint ready, I'm going to get the brush that was included and I'm simply gonna paint those areas that need this cockpit green. You might find that you're able to get away with just one layer of this paint, but you might need to go over the top if it hasn't quite given you the finish that you're looking for. Give it a give it a once over. Try and work it into those little nooks and crannies of the details. But if there's little areas that you know you're going to have to glue more stuff onto in a minute, it might be worth avoiding putting paint on those so you get a nice good bond for your glue. Because if there's paint in the way of the glue, it won't it won't cement it together so well. So that's done, I'd say that probably doesn't need another coat. I'm, I'll be happy with that. Inside the cockpit, if your painting skills aren't amazing, it doesn't really matter because cockpits can be quite hard to see through those tiny little uh, canopies. With the bottom of the cockpit done, it's now time to do the other parts of the cockpit. So we've got here the fuselage half. The fuselage is, is the main body of the aircraft. And then we've got these other components off of the sprue as indicated by the instructions. So this is like a rear bulkhead, we've got the pilot's chair, and then this is the front control panel. So I haven't painted anything yet, I'm just going to simply start gluing stuff together. So the first thing I'm going to do is glue my chair to the bulkhead. 
So there are little locating marks on the back of the chair and they go on these four pins here. It is a little bit of a fiddly process to do this. I remember it being fiddly the last time I built one of these kits. That's just going to pop on there like that. The thing with model building is you are going to need some patience. I mean, if you don't have patience when you start off, you're definitely going to learn some patience by the end. There we go. That's on there now. So let's not nudge that again for a while. The, uh, the bulkhead is going to glue inside the aircraft here. So a bit more glue on there. Oh, you probably didn't see that. A bit more glue on this bit here. And then this is going to glue inside there like that. So there's a little hole and it should join up with this groove on there like that. Try and make sure it's as straight and level as you can get it because you're going to have to join that on in a minute to the other fuselage half. It's going to go together. Whilst we're here, we're also going to do the control panel. So run some, some glue down there. That's been nudged out of the way. And then that goes inside of that bit there. Like that again, try and get it as neat as you can. Do they join up? That's a question, isn't it? So they should, that should glue onto there. Oh, there's little mounting points for it. Yeah, okay, seen, seen that. Let's get some glue on our cocktail stick, not on that end, there we go. Glue on the cocktail stick, let's get some on here. A little bit on there, a little bit on there, and a little bit on there. There's too much on that bit, a bit on there, there we go. And now let's see if we can join these up together. There we go, in their little holes, fantastic. Look at that, isn't that a nice looking, nice looking cockpit there? Yeah. Quite, quite nice for a 170 second scale kit really. A little bit fiddly, obviously if this is your first time you might find it a bit difficult, but it's not too bad. I've not really struggled so far. So with that done, I'm going to leave that to dry, let the glue dry, and then I'll come back and do some more painting. Whilst that side is uh, drying, I'm going to paint the inside of the other half. So get my brush back, get my brush back, and I'm gonna use the uh, the 78, which is the cockpit green again from before. So just on the inside here, get this area all colored in that green paint. Again, avoiding the areas where I don't want the paint to be, because I'm gonna put glue in this groove here and on this groove up here. So I might need to go back over that with the green later, but for now, I'm just going to avoid that so I get a nice gluey bond later. When you do your cockpits, it's always a good idea to come a little bit further forward and a little bit further back than you think you need to, because when you put your uh, cockpit assembly together and you close the fuselage up, if you can still see gray either side of that when you look through the windows, um, that might be a little bit disappointing so I always go a little bit further so I've, I've covered myself in case you can still see that area when you look through the windows. And with the glue on this part now dry I'm going to just paint all of that area in the cockpit green. See these little details on the inside here? If you really wanted to you could pick them out in a different colour like the black but I'm not going to bother purely because like I've said, it's going to be difficult to see inside the cockpit when, uh, when everything's assembled. So the main reason why I assembled this before painting was to get that good glue bond between those plastic parts. You can, if you, if you find it difficult to do this, you can just assemble it and then paint it if you really want, it's up to you. Completely your choice. So whilst this cockpit is uh, drying, I'm going to move back over to the floor uh, area that we did earlier. There's a few more details that need to be glued in there and they consist of the pedals for the rudder, which go in this bit here, and the control column, which goes there. So I'm going to add them now and then I'm going to paint them. They're going to be painted a little bit differently. So the control column, that goes on like that there we go you could paint these before you uh, stick them on again if that's what you wanted to do and then the 
pedals go on like that. I like to think that I have got reasonable, good, uh, reasonably good brush control. So I'm hoping that I don't make too much of a pig's ear of this. So using the uh, included number two brush again, the Humbrol 78 cockpit green makes a reappearance as I do the main stick of the column. It is quite possible to do quite fine work with the included brush. The area that you might struggle is when we come in a future episode to do the main um, camouflage scheme because that requires painting larger areas so it's not quite dry the glue yet. See it moving around. But yeah, when we come to do the large cop the uh, large can oh, what am I saying? The large camouflage schemes the smaller brush, the number two, won't be so good for that. So the next paint I'm going to use is the Humbrol 11 and this is another acrylic paint I got in a different starter set. It's a silver colour and I'm going to use this on the pedals for the rudder. Again I'm just going to use my number two brush but this time I'm taking it straight out of the pot. I'm not bothering to thin, thin it down, I don't see the point. I'm just going to put it straight on those pedals as carefully as I can. Building models with a camera in the way isn't the easiest so naturally you'll have an advantage over me because you'll be able to move the model around much more freely. There we go. I think we're there with that. Silver is now on there. So what I'm going to do now is a slightly higher level technique. I'm going to take the paint that's still on my brush and wipe it on my paper towel over here and remove the sort of excess. This is a technique called dry brushing. So get a little bit of paint on there, then rub it off. And you think, why? What's the point in that? Paint on, rub it off. So now there's hardly any paint on there and I'm going to brush it very gently over the details. So if we're getting a bit closer, I'm going to get closer with the camera there. There we go. So on the left, you can see that I've dry brushed. And on the right, you see that I haven't. And if I dry brush over the top of these details, you can see they start to come out. Very simple technique. And it helps give a little more depth and realism. Naturally, um, these would get worn. The paint would get worn off of them as the pilot is sitting there and rubbing his feet against them. So I think that's quite a realistic technique. We might see more of that a bit later. The next paint we're going to use is the 33 matte black. I don't know where the number is on that one. Uh, this one is included in the set. I'm not going to thin it again. I'm just going to take a small amount of the paint and use that on the top of the control panel. Not the control panel, sorry, the control column. I will use it on the control panel as well in a minute. Just a little bit on there and then very carefully add it to the top of the control column. You don't want to put too much paint on because this has got like see-through details and if you put too much on you'll clog them up and they won't be see-through anymore. And that is pretty much it for the lower cockpit floor area. So yeah, like I said, I am going to use this on the control panel and I'm simply just going to take whatever I've got left here and just run it across there very carefully, just avoiding the other details there that we don't want to paint. There we go. And I will get this, I think it's the gyroscope down the bottom. We'll get that bit there. And that's that. You could, if you're feeling up to it and you haven't already, get those details which are on the wall over there. Just a quick blob of paint on each one. It's not a massive deal if you don't because, like I said, you're probably not going to be able to see them. And that is almost it for the cockpit area. So whilst all of that paint is drying, I think it's a good time to do the pilot. 
I know the instructions tell us that we should put the pilot in like at the end of the build, but I don't think that's a particularly sensible time to put it in. So I'm gonna put him into the plane after I've painted him, which is at this stage now. So let's start painting this guy here. For this, I'm gonna get my triple zero brush out. It's got a much finer point on it to help me get some of those smaller details like his face and other areas. But for the larger areas, I will go back to my zero. Speaking of the face, that's the first thing I'm going to paint. I like to paint my figures, as most people do, in the sense of like getting yourself dressed. So if you think about it, the first thing that you're wearing is your skin. So we start off with the skin and then you go on to perhaps the trousers and the jacket and then you go to the gloves and the helmet and so on and so forth. You build up in layers as you go. So I've got this Humbrol 61, which is a flesh colored acrylic. This again came from another starter set and I'm just gonna take a small amount at the, on the end of my brush, there it is, and add that to his face. Very carefully. If you're not too careful, it doesn't massively matter because you're going to go over any areas you've already covered with that paint in a minute with a different color. Painting pilot figures can be quite difficult, so I'm going to make my life a little bit easier. I'm gonna stick them to the end of this cotton bud, which I've uh, snipped the other end off of. So I'm gonna use a tiny drop of super glue, a little bit of super glue, just to hold him on. Don't worry, because it's not gonna be permanent. I can just snap it off when I finish painting. And to be brutally honest, it doesn't matter if you glue something to hit the bottom of him because that's where he's gonna be glued into the aircraft when we finished. So you're not gonna see it anyway. And there we go. He's now glued onto his little stick, which is gonna make it a lot easier for us to move him around and paint him. And speaking of painting him, the next color I'm gonna do is his uniform. And I know in the instructions, Airfix tells you to paint him primarily the brown color that comes included in the set, but I don't want to do that, seeing as I do have some extra paints available. So I'm going to use this 96, which is an RAF blue uniform color. This, unfortunately, is the enamel version because that's all I've got. I am not a fan of enamel paints, and that's because they're just they just find them harder to work with than um, acrylic. Acrylic is good because you can use um, the Tamiya Extra uh, acrylic paint thinner and water to thin them, you can use water to clean your paints, but enamels are much harder to clean up because it's effectively oil-based. So I can't use water, I can't use the Tamiya acrylic thinners, I have to use either special enamel thinners or white spirit. White spirit's easy to get hold of, it's like two pound for a litre here in the UK. So I will be using white spirit to clean this up. You can use white spirit to thin this paint as well, but I'm not going to bother. I'm going to use it straight out of the pot. So after I've mixed this thoroughly and, um, you know, messed about with it, because I'm sure that it's probably settled in the, in the pot, they tend to settle in layers. So I've got to really work it to make sure it's fit to go. I will be back and I'll be painting the rest of the figure. The only thing is this enamel takes much longer to dry than acrylic. So you have to give it enough drying time. Although I'm going to be working on top of it imminently, as soon as it's touch dry, it won't be like dry all the way through for a good, well, it can take up to 24 hours for enamel to dry. Acrylic can take considerably less, but enamel can take considerably longer. Well, not everything. I don't need to paint everything. I'm going to paint um, sort of from his boots down in uh, the brown in a minute. Again, if you find when you paint these things that you need to use a couple of coats to get the finish that you're looking for, then uh, feel free. I have known it on occasion that um, I've had to use like four or five layers just to get an even coverage of paint. To be honest though, enamels tend to be quite good that you only really need to do one. Although the enamel is still drying, I can move on and paint the boots because I haven't got any enamel paint on there. So I'm going to use the 33 matte black from before because I think that's quite an appropriate color for the boots. And again, I'm not going to bother thinning this paint down. I'm just going to take a little bit out of the pot directly 
and then just very carefully pop it onto his boots. Obviously if you've only got the paints in the kit then feel free to follow the Airfix instructions. I just thought it might make it look a little bit nicer if you wanted to use some different colours to give you an idea of what to do. Up next is this Humbrol 24 and it's just a matte yellow colour. Uh, this is not included in the set but I am going to use it because he is wearing a life vest. So I'm just going to take a little bit off of here. I'm just going to get it out of the pot straight away again. I'm not going to bother messing around with thinning it. And then I'm going to very carefully paint it onto where his life vest is. There is a strap that goes over the top so I will just paint over that for now. It goes around the back here and then back around to the other side. Now I'm going to use the 29 brown, which comes as part of the set. This seems thinner than normal. I'm going to use this on pretty much everything else now. I'm going to use it on his helmet, up here. This must be one of the new Humbrol paints because um, they're not normally this thin, but it's going on all right. So I was using it on his helmet. There we go, more or less like that. He has got goggles on, so we will Look at sorting them out after this. He's also got gloves on. So where is his hands? His hands are here. So let's just get a bit of paint on his gloves. There and there. Like that. There we go. And I am going to use it on his straps as well. Because he's got straps that go to a buckle here. So this is the buckle. He's got these straps that come across the top here. They also go over his waist like that. I don't know if it's a five point harness or a four point harness, but it's a representation of what he was wearing in his chair to keep him safe. So that goes over the top like that. And over there. There we go. So, what's next? Well, the next thing, I think, is to just use the silver on the buckle. Uh, and to very carefully, just be more on the buckle, there. To very carefully pick out his goggles on the top. There we go. And that is, in essence, our pilot complete. I'm going to do one more thing though, when all of that paint is completely dry. In this pot I've got a little bit of water, and what I'm going to do is take my... Oh, there's the number. The 33 matte black from earlier, and get a little bit on my brush. And then I'm just going to mix it into the water. There we go. What I'm doing here is creating a wash. A very, very thin layer of paint. I don't want it to be so thin that you can't see the paint, but that's probably what I've got up the top here, where my brush is, that's probably thin enough. We'll see as we go. So what I'm going to do now, let's zoom in. We go spread that paint around. I've got this face as well, there we go. And I think you can see that this is starting to run into those little recesses and gaps all over him and giving a impression of shadow helping to bring out some of those details whilst the pilot figure is drying we need to get this decal onto our control panel so the very first thing i'm going to do is cut that out simply just going to use my scissors to do this taking care to avoid the other decals on the sheet. There we go. So now we've got that one. And what we need to do, it says I've not been able to pick it up. What we need to do in order to get this from there onto our control panel there is to soak this in some water. So I've cleaned my pot out and put some warm water in there and I'll just 
soak it in the water and this is going to release the transfer from the backing paper. So that's probably long enough. I'm just going to take it out and let it sit for a little moment. And this product I've got here is called Decal Fix and there are loads of different um, decal solutions out there on, on the market but this is probably the one that's going to be most accessible to you in your model shop. This seems to be stocked by a lot of different places. If you don't have this then it's absolutely fine just to not use anything, just use water instead. But what this is going to do is sort of act a bit like a solvent. It's going to help melt that transfer onto the surface of your plastic model and, and help it stick. So I'm going to use a little bit of this. And the way that we do that is we simply put some in our brush, just like paint, but it's, it's, it's almost, it's quite watery and then brush it onto the area where the transfer is going to go. I find that decal fix compared to other solutions that I've used in the past is a little bit aggressive and it does leave a slightly glossy residue. But now that we've done that, we're gonna get our transfer, which is, which is suitably soaked and you can see that it's now sliding around on our backing paper. Now be careful with these because you don't want them to like tear or fold over on themselves because it'll be quite difficult. You can use tweezers to put them on your model if you want, but I'm just going to use my brush. And then you can use your tweezers to move them around or a cocktail stick or something like that. There we go. And then we get it in the right place. Just give it a move, move it around. Just going to reposition it with my knife. Be careful I don't cut it very carefully so it sits completely on the control panel. There we go, all the way across. That's it. So the decal fix we've applied behind there is going to act sort of as a glue, but also sort of melt it a little bit onto the surface details. So this wrinkling that I've got here, that will disappear. And I'm going to help it along a little bit by putting a little bit more on the top. Like I've said though, if you haven't got decal fix or a decal solution, don't worry about it for now. You can just stick them on with water, leave them completely to dry, and they should stick down onto the surface of the model. It might not be as good, but it will work. And I know that it works because this is my first ever model kit which I built about 10, 20, 20 years ago, 25, 30 years ago, so a long time ago. And you can see that these decals, they're still here. They were applied just with water, nothing else, and they've gone onto the model and they're still there. So it is possible. You don't need decal setting solutions if you don't have them. And with that done, the very last thing we're going to do in this video is remove a bit of paint off of the chair because that's where we want our pilot to go. And as previously discussed, not having paint there will help in helping the glue settle on it and give a good strong bond. Add a bit of cement to it. Going to snap our pilot off. There he goes. And then get him in our chair. Hook his legs through there, that's it. And there we go. So this is it for this episode. And what have we covered? We covered off the basics of the kit, some of the tools you're going to need, and we've assembled the interior cockpit area, the lower wings, and we painted that side as well. So in the next one, we should be doing some general assembly. Naturally, if you haven't seen the first episode, that would be the perfect place to start, and then you can come back to this one afterwards. So having completed these steps in the previous video, there is something that we need to do first, and there is a clear part that needs to go in this hole here. 
As covered in the previous episode, I'm going to be using my snips and my knife to remove the plastic parts and then sanding them with my sanding stick. So for more information on how to do that, make sure you check out the original one. My snips are too big to get into that gap there. There we go, so that's now off. And we'll just trim that bit up. So clear parts, there's something you need to remember with clear parts is that the glue that's included, so this one here, this poly cement, does run the risk of causing the plastic parts to fog up. It makes them go white and then you can't see through them anymore, which is a bit of a pain. There are a number of different products out there which you can use to prevent this from happening, such as PVA glue or clear general purpose glues, but I'm going to use this um, product here purely because I bought it and I wanted to try it out. This is Clear Fix. This is a clear drying glue from Humbrol. Again, if you don't have this and you don't have anything else, like even PVA, then you can use the poly cement that's included. It will just do the same job, but it might fog up your clear parts. So use a very tiny amount of it. Pop it on a cocktail stick and then just run it around the outside of the hole. That's that done. Now it's time to place the part. And apparently the triangular bit points forwards. So we'll get that in place and then use the tweezers, there we go. Press it down, and after a few minutes that glue will be holding it firmly in place. Let's now join the two fuselage halves together. And just like I did with the wings in the previous episode, I'm going to test fit to make sure that I don't need to move anything around. There are some little locating pins and holes to help join everything up. But as you can see, it seems to be all lined up right. The, uh, the stuff on the inside, the cockpit stuff, I've got that in the right place, so everything's good there. Obviously, if this was not quite in the right place, you'd have to move it around a little bit, just give it a nudge forwards or whatever to get it sitting correctly. So what I'm gonna do now, take my poly cement, and I'm just gonna run a small amount of it over these areas here, just to get going, come on. And that is it. So, again, just like in the previous episode, if you don't want to get gluey fingers, maybe wearing gloves might be a good choice, or just be super careful. So this might need a little bit of pressure to hold it together as the glue dries. Any excess that seeps out, just quickly wipe it away and clean your fingers so you don't leave any fingerprints on anything else later on. As mentioned in the previous video, if you did go out and get yourself some Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, Running that along the seams here is really going to help. It's going to flow into those gaps. And if you press them together, it's going to get a lovely bond between them. If obviously you don't have this, don't worry too much. Just make sure you hold the plastic parts together until they are completely dry. With that done, I'm going to sand these seams just like I did before, but I'm not going to use my sanding stick because I need something a little bit more flexible. I've got some uh, 400 grit sandpaper here and I'm just going to very carefully run it along those seams there. It'll just help hide them a little bit, hide the fact that we've glued it together. And on the nose. And underneath as well. You could use your sanding stick here, it wouldn't really be too much of an issue. But just be careful you don't remove any of those nice details that are on the model. And the next step is to join our lower wing to our fuselage. So again, I'm just going to check that it aligns. You've got to be careful because we've got these sticking up uh, details here now. So it's a matter of getting them all aligned properly. It's now that I realise why they said put the uh, pilot in at the end, because this is in the way of the pilot. So I wonder if I can take him out for the time being. Oh yeah, he's still not dry. There we go, let's give him a little... Let's see if we just take him out for a minute. Get that in place, and then we'll put him back in afterwards. So that's an error on my part. So if you did that in the last episode, just be aware that you might have to do that as well and then put him back in. But yeah, so that fits now. Let's get some glue 
around that. Run it around the seams. Oh, there's too much there. This is the problem with this glue. You squeeze too hard, you're going to get too much out. We'll just remove that. Where's my cocktail stick? Remove that off of there. Too much there. There we go. Pop that on there. Carefully. There it is. Press it down. Make sure we've got a good bond. And I'll put some more glue in there. Then we'll put the pilot back in. That was a silly mistake, wasn't it? But this is it, isn't it? People make mistakes. Is he going to go in there now? Now that the uh, control column is in there. Yes, very careful. You have to be very careful to get him in. He doesn't quite fit otherwise. There we go. Right, problem solved. With that done, if we flip over the model, there we go, we're now going to add the lower part of the fuselage there. It's got the tail wheel housing. Not all models have this sort of design. I'm pretty sure that Airfix have done this on this um, model because the Hawker Hurricane had a slightly different version of this area on the very early version of the Hurricane. And there is a kit from Airfix which represents that. But this is the slightly later version of the Hurricane Mark 1. So it has a slightly different version of this. Slip that on there nice and careful. There we go. And again, just hold it in place until the glue starts to dry. The rudder is the next bit to go on. So we'll run a little bit of glue down there. And then get that on there. If you really wanted to, you could position this like at a different angle. You know, as, as rudders were designed to swing from left to right like that. You could, if you wanted to, position it off center. But I'm gonna go for the central position. And then what we need to pop on is the horizontal tail surfaces. And they just slot into these little holes here, just like that, easy enough to do. It is worth checking these um, horizontal surfaces are completely level when you've put them in just to make sure they're not drooping down to one side or the other. There we go. I'm just going to put that to one side for a moment because we've got a sub-assembly to do, which is the sort of air intake and radiators. So this has got some sort of vents or panels inside of it, which I'm just going to add. So that one pops in there. Yeah, they've got sort of locating marks on the back, which go into those little slots. So just push them in together. And the same with this one. That will go in its little slot. Let's get our tweezers out. Probably a bit easier with tweezers. Like that. Get it in nice and straight. There we go. And I am going to paint these very quickly with the Humbrol 33 matte black that came included in the set, just so that it's done. Because when I come to add the next bit, just get a quick layer of that on there. I might actually, seeing as I've got that silver, do a little bit of dry brushing on it just to bring out those nice details there. So we'll do that one. And we'll do the one on that side as well. There we go. A bit more paint. I'm going to do the inside of the vent as well. Because if I don't paint it now, it will be hard to do it later. It doesn't really matter at that point then. Cool. So this is the, uh, the other bit that's going to go on the front. So I'm just going to paint the inside of that. And I'm going to just dry brush this silver paint on, just like I did in the previous episode, removing the excess paint on a paper towel, and then just dry brushing the, uh, the residue over the top. 
There we go, that looks quite nice. Do it on both sides. This is not really going to be visible later, but at least I'll know I've done it. And now we can add the front onto there and a bit of glue around the outside and then pop it on. Make sure you get it the right way around. It should be flat end, flat side pointing up and then it joins it like that. That's how it should be. There we go, just push it together and hold it there until the glue dries. And then that is going to go on to the bottom of our aircraft. So if we pull our aircraft back and flip it over, you can see that there are these two holes here, these two slots rather, on the bottom of the model. So I'm going to add or run a little bit of glue around the edges of the assembly we've just done and in the grooves there. Flip it over and then pop it into its grooves there. That's it, you should just slot in and that's it. That's your air intake and radiator done. Whilst I'm on this side of the aircraft there's these little holes here which have a part that needs to go in it and that's sort of like another little air intake so we'll pop that in place in its holes whilst we're here come on in you go a little bit fiddly that there he goes he's in there now and still on the bottom of the model we have a tail wheel that needs to go into that hole there so again a little bit of glue And then make sure you get this tail wheel the right way around. It should be sort of pointing backwards. And then it just slots in there. Done. It should be pointing backwards like that. There is a small detail that needs to go in this hole here on the bottom left wing of the model. So a little bit of glue in there and then we pop that in with the sort of longer stalk into the hole and the shorter one out. I think this is a pitot tube and it, it does something to sort of detect air pressure and altitude or something like that. So it's like a it's like an aircraft sensor thing more than anything. I'm adding it now purely because the um nothing's painted and it'll be easier at this stage. Obviously in the future when you when you get you develop your skills a bit more you might decide to add these small details towards the end of the build purely because handling your model now with all these small details on you have to be super careful that you don't knock them off by accident but i think the last small detail i'm going to add on the bottom is this sort of pipe work here and that needs to go into the holes in here so a little bit fiddly with that one so i'm probably going to put the cement on the part and then it sort of has to you have to work your way through and into the holes flipping over to the top there's a small detail which needs to be put into this slot which is the aerial support mast so we'll pop that in making sure that the sort of sticky out bit for the aerial wire goes backwards towards the tail. Later on at the end of the build we might add some aerial rigging between these two points, well between that point there and that point there. The kit does come with these parts here for the uh, landing gear to display the aircraft flying. If like me however you want to build it down we're going to use these bits uh, probably in the next episode along with the separate doors and the separate wheels which also come on the sprues um, because I think that adding them now and then trying to paint them whilst they're on the model will be much much too difficult so that will probably be part of the next video but before we call it a day on this video let's assemble the propeller 
if we're careful with our glue, we should be able to turn it by hand when we've finished. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some glue to this back plate because the propeller itself is going to attach to that. Now we need to make sure we've got this the right way round and there are some little markings on this side which I'm going to go ahead and presume means it goes on like that. Over the top of that we're going to put our spinner which is the nose comb part. Again a bit more glue and then we push that over the top and it should help keep it all neatly aligned on that side there. And now we're going to push the retaining pin through this sort of mounting block like that. So we've got it sticking out at this end. Then we're going to put a little bit of glue on our pin and the pin is going to go into our propeller. And push it all together. Hopefully that means that this sort of block allows you to rotate it freely. So if I hold the, the block we should be able to do that. So the whole point of that is when we push that inside the nose of the aircraft later we glue this part, this part here, and not the pin. So we glue this bit into there and then we should still be able to turn it. But, you know, careful with your glue because it might not work if you're not careful. All that's left to go on the model are the clear parts which we'll do right before the end and the engine exhausts and the landing gear parts because it'll be much easier to paint them separately. But other than that, the build of the model is probably about 90% hmm, complete I would say. So at this point now you should have a mostly assembled model kit ready for the next step which will be painting which I will see you in the next video for. Just as a side note I've been working on this model kit now for about four hours. Obviously through the power of editing I've been able to reduce that down a bit. So the first episode was about two hours and then this was about an hour and a half so there or thereabouts depending on uh, what I do in between. Most of that time though is taken up just by waiting for paint and glue to dry. So yeah like I said in the uh, first episode if you haven't got patience you will have patience by the end of this. So the first thing I'm going to do is flip the plane over. I find it generally easier to paint the light colour of the aircraft first. So if you've got your instructions, you'll know that the lightest colour, if we move that to the side, is the underside. It's the Humbrol 90 down there. So that comes included in the set. And here it is. And as mentioned in uh, one of the earlier videos, I feel like Humbrol have actually started pre-thinning their paints in here because they don't seem as thick as normal. But I'll just, uh, yeah, so if I pop that on there, it doesn't seem to be as thick as normal. It seems to be going on all right. It's not great though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some paint to my pot here. By the way, I'm using a size 3 brush at the moment because the 2 that was included in the kit is a bit small for painting large areas. So a bit of paint on there. And then I'm going to add a drop of the Tamiya acrylic thinner that I spoke about in a previous episode just to help it flow a bit. Now, we're coming over to actually paint the model. So there are two ways of thought about this really. The first thought is to do it all in the same direction, 
keep your paint as fluid as you can and adding water or a thinner to your acrylic paint will help it dry a little bit slower and what we're doing when we, we make it dry slower is helping it self level why do we want it to self level well that's because if it self levels it won't leave any brush marks it won't leave any streaks from where I've been physically brushing it onto the model so if you haven't got a acrylic thinner like me you can just use a drop of water instead and don't be tempted to put too much paint on in one go either it's better to have a couple of thin layers rather than one thick one if you put too much on in one go it tends to pull or run into the details where you don't want it whereas a couple of thin ones allows you to level off your paint layer as you go if it was a bit thick in one place you can just add a little bit more paint there there we go so all of the underside is going to be painted in this light grey green colour officially I think the Royal Air Force call it Sky Type S but Humbrol don't call it that other manufacturers of paints do call it that but Humbrol just don't here is that clear part we put in in the last episode so just be careful painting around that you don't want to go over the top of that because that's supposed to be like a light of some sort so yeah just take your time and with the magic of editing I'm going to skip forward now to the next layer and there we go the uh, first layer of paint is now on and you can see it's a bit streaky uh, that's because it's just different thicknesses throughout so I'm going to have to put a second or maybe even a third layer on to get a nice even finish so we're going to repeat the same process as before take a little bit of our thinner I'm using the X28 from Tamiya and uh, mix it up mix it up with our paint just to help it flow a little bit better to give a nice even spread there we go. and when we've done that we're just going to put it all over the bottom model again working in the same way so we're going to go sort of opposites this time so we sort of brushed long ways in the last layer now I'm going sort of the other way in this layer building it up in layers like bricks to sort of even it all out a bit again taking care around the light here so that we don't cover it by accident and if you're a little bit messy with this layer sort of around the edges at the back and things it doesn't matter so much because in the next couple of layers when we go on to the other colors you'll go over the top of that so you shouldn't see that again the second layer is now dry but uh, it's not quite there yet so I think one more layer of this uh, sky type s Humbrol 90 paint in the exact same way that we've done it before we'll sort it right out so again we're just going to get one more layer it doesn't really matter which direction we go this time because we've gone in both directions already just get that on there nice and even although before we pop on to the next color it's worth painting your landing gear uh, covers with the same color at the moment seeing as you've got the paint out so I've already done that I've done that on both sides there you go just like that again you'll probably need about three coats of paint in order to get a nice even finish the underside looks uh, pretty convincing now so I think it's time to flip it over and start work on the top this is going to have a camouflage of green and brown but to start with we're not going to worry about having to mark out any differences like in between the camouflage we're literally just going to start off by painting the whole top surface brown so I've thinned my paints just as before but this time we do have to be a little careful so that we get a nice neat edge and don't go over like I just did there so if you do go over just quickly remove it with your thumb or a piece of cotton a cotton pad or a um, paper towel or a cotton bud 
just try your best to get nice neat lines between your existing paint. If you do make a bit of an error though, don't worry too much because you can always get that other paint out and go back over the top. You will need a few color, a few layers to cover a darker color with a light color, but it is possible. So just persevere with it. Best thing to do is to take your time and just very carefully get your paint where you need it first time. Special care is needed as you work yourself around the uh, canopy area of the cockpit because you don't want to get brown paint on that cockpit that we painted in the first episode. So just be careful going around that. So there are some areas where you, you need to be super careful with your brush like here. Now if you haven't got particularly good brush control you can use some masking tape if you've got it. Just run it along the areas you want to protect and then oh, I've gone over that bit so I'll, I'll touch that bit up. Oh I've got jerky hands today. Run it over the area you want to protect and then you should get a nice straight line. I've made a few little errors there and there which I will go over with my light beige colour imminently. The first layer of paint is dry and you can see that obviously we need a second, at least, possibly even a third. So I've thinned my paint exactly the same. And I'm just going to apply it just like I did with the lower paint surfaces. I'm just going to brush in the sort of opposite direction to how I did it earlier. But this being such a dark colour, we might get away with just two thin coats. I mean, you can already see the contrast between the two wings. This wing looks almost ready to go, whereas obviously I've not painted this one yet, so it's not quite there. But yeah, we might only need the one extra layer on top of this. So I'm just going to finish up painting the whole of this as I did on the previous step, and I will see you when it's ready to go. There we go, the uh, brown is now on and it's a fairly even, uniform colour. And there's hardly any brush strokes in there because we thinned the paint slightly. So, the next thing, we need to pay special attention to the painting instructions. So as you can see on here, the green goes over in a camouflage scheme. Some people have different ways of doing it where they mask the edges using um, blue tack for example or masking tape but I'm just going to freehand it and you can freehand it too if you want to. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this and then transfer it by eye using my brush to the model. Having thoroughly mixed and thinned my paints just like before I'm going to use the finer uh, number two brush which came in the in the set to just carefully I'm going to go just carefully put this paint onto the model. You can see that this is considerably darker than the uh, brown, so this is why this is the last paint to go on. I find that adding the paint into the sort of the middle of where you want it to go and then building up the edges works quite well. That needs to come down here like that. And then you can pull that paint which you've already placed on the model down as long as it's wet enough to do so. It probably stops about there and then it comes out and around. And the camouflage is done. This first initial layer has probably taken me about 20 minutes, just very carefully went round where I needed to go. You'll note that the entire cockpit area here has got the, red, the green around it as it should as per the instructions, which means that when I come to paint the canopy frames, I will do so with just the green because I don't need to use any brown, which makes it easier for me. The green isn't as uh, colour fast as I would like it at the moment, it's not as solid, so I am going to go back over the top and I'm just going to use the same paint as before, so by the time I get round to doing the last bit, the first bit will be dry, so again, 
just the same process but this time you can afford to go a little bit lighter you don't have to go right to the edges if you don't want to because you've already got paint there just nice and tidy nice and neat nice and quick to be honest you don't have to spend loads of time on your second layer just enough to hide any paint marks brush marks or areas which aren't quite as thick as they should be and the camo is done not too bad if I'm honest I don't think I'll go for a third layer on top I think that'll just be overkill that's uh, quite a lot of paint layers on there already the color markation between the two sides is quite it's all right it's not it's not possibly the neatest I've ever done but it's okay but yeah so at this point your model should look something like this but whilst I've got the green paint out I'm going to do the cockpit canopy and that's still on the sprue I've not taken it off and I'm not going to take it off to do my painting so I'm going to use my fine brush again this is my size triple zero and I'm not going to thin the paint I'm going to take it straight out of the pot and I'm very carefully let's zoom in on that shall we going to paint the frame lines now don't worry if you get it in the wrong places just let it dry and then get a toothpick I'm gonna to have to do that there and scrape off the acrylic that you got in the wrong place not really possible to do that with enamel enamel just dries too hard but acrylic doesn't you can take acrylic off with a cocktail stick when it's dry so just run your brush along the frames here these are the bits which would hold the glass panes in place I've gone wait I'll put too much paint on there it's really hard to do with a camera in front of you so I'm gonna do it on that one I'm also gonna do it on uh, part number two you get two uh, front uh, windshields of the cockpit I think that one there is for the earlier version which doesn't have the bulletproof glass whereas this version I'm painting here does have the bulletproof glass and it's hardly noticeable but the front pane here is slightly thicker than the uh, one on the other side so we'll put some paint on there I will probably do about two to three coats on here just to make sure that you can't see through it. Okay, and I will see you again when I finish putting all of that, that paint on there. And there we go, not looking too bad if I'm honest. The thing with these small scale kits is that um, from normal viewing distances, any imperfections, you can't see them. So don't worry too much if you have made a few errors here and there because you know who's going to get right up and close and uh, inspect it I mean that being said some people do but um, you shouldn't feel upset if you've made some errors because it's all a learning point the main thing is to have fun and I hope you have had fun uh, building this one so far because I know I have but I haven't quite finished this episode yet there's still a few more things we need to paint and one of those things is the propeller assembly we built earlier so I have thinned the included black paint just as before with a little bit of that thinner and I'm just very carefully painting most of it black. I'm not going to paint the bit I'm holding because that will get glued inside the nose of the model but everything at the front that is going to be visible is going to get painted and I don't think I will need a second layer of paint because this is actually slightly thicker than I anticipated. As long as it dries without leaving any brush strokes then I'll be happy. Something else that could be painted black whilst we've got that paint on our brush are the wheels. And I've just stuck a cocktail stick in the hole in the back just so it gives me uh, an easier way of holding it as I paint it. So I'm just going to paint the whole thing pretty much in this black. I'm not worrying too much about neatness. The hubs in the middle will be painted silver with the silver I've got already open as soon as this black is dry. Oh, and I almost forgot that the uh, wheel on the tail needs painting black as well. So very carefully with my 
zero 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 paintbrush I'm just going to paint the tire you need a steady hand to do this one there we go and that's done now and the last thing I'm going to do with this black paint is just uh, on the cockpit here you can see you've got the um, sort of that's the bit where the gun sight would go and in real life that would be black so might as well whilst we've got the paint out just give that a quick cover just a quick cover of that all done the propeller is now dry and I know this bit isn't in the instructions but the um, RAF tended to paint the tips of their blades in a yellow just so that people didn't walk into them, you know, so they could see them spinning. So I'm using Humbrol 24 matte yellow, which is the same one I used in the previous video or the first video to do a um, life vest on the pilot. So very carefully with my fine brush, I'm just going to put a yellow line on the very tip of each blade. And I'm going to do it front and back. I didn't bother thinning this paint, this is just straight out of the pot because I'm only using such a tiny amount. The wheels are now dry so I'm going to use that silver Humbrol 11 acrylic on the central hubs. The instructions, if you haven't got the, uh, the silver, the instructions say that you can use Humbrol 90 which is the undercut, under the underbelly colour that we used earlier, the sort of sky type S. Just using a very fine brush. I'm using the paint straight out of the pot again, I haven't bothered to thin it because I'm only using a very tiny amount. As we get to the... Don't forget to do the other side as well. Not so easy to do with a camera in the way again. I might need to finish this one off camera, but you get the idea. Whilst I've got that silver paint out, I'm going to use it on the landing gear legs, which are still on the sprue. Just give them a quick coat of this so that when we come to the final part of this video, they are ready to go. And I'm also going to base coat the engine exhausts. I am going to go over the top with a slightly different colour later. If you've only got the black paint, then that's fine. Use the black to paint these ones but I am going to use a more bronzy colour on the top in a minute to make them look a little bit more rusty. And here's that bronze colour I was talking about, Humber 171 Antique Bronze. So I'm going to use the same technique that I used earlier, the dry brushing. Take the paint, remove it on a paper towel and then apply it to your exhausts give a more rusty sort of finish to them. There we go, that looks, that looks alright doesn't it? Not too bad. And with that we come to the last painting step that I'm going to complete in this build. Well in this episode at the very least. So the satin 135 I've got here is a clear acrylic varnish and what I'm going to do with this is thin it down with some water is brush it onto the entire model so it's got a slightly purpley white sheen to it at the moment but it will dry completely clear I'm using water because I'm not wanting to use the the thinner that we used earlier because that could react with the previous paint layers and cause them to bleed a little bit so I'm going to just use water brush this varnish all over and this is a completely optional step this is purely um, choice for me if you don't have a varnish then you, you don't obviously have to do this this is this is a uh, up to you but there is a reason why I've chosen to do this so in the next episode we're going to be putting our decals our water slide transfers onto our model and they love having a glossy uh, sort of layer to sit on. If you don't have that you run the risk of causing the transfers to silver and what that basically is 
is the film which the transfers are printed onto will sort of go white and shiny and it will look a bit like silver and that's not very realistic it will become quite noticeable as well you'll probably think to yourself oh I wish I hadn't done that now because you can see that and the, when that happens it's usually going to occur on a matte finish so matte finish is what we've got at the moment where it's a dull it's not shiny that's a matte finish so if I stick decal straight onto there although the cartograph decals are very good and they don't silver very often it is a risk it could still happen so if this is something that I'm choosing to do because I know from experience that it will make your transfers look much nicer when they've been applied also this extra layer is going to help protect all of the uh, camouflage layers that we've already applied so they, they shouldn't get damaged during the decal application process. So it's sort of a two, sort of a two pronged uh, reason really. So I'm going to just paint this varnish all over the model. One coat should be enough, top and bottom, and I will see you when it's dry. And there it is. All the painting is now complete. You can see that that satin has given it a slightly shiny sheen to it and that will help the decals in the next episode when they go on. Obviously purely optional like I've said, but if you wanted to do it, I think it would definitely help you out a little bit. I also quite like the way it looks. I like that little bit of shine. Some people will say that a shiny uh, hurricane wasn't realistic. They didn't want them shiny so they didn't reflect the sunlight. Well, I quite like the look of it. So in this episode, we painted our Airfix hurricane. We've done our propeller, our wheels, our cockpit canopies and we did all of our uh, landing gear legs and things like that so there is in essence no more painting to do we might do a little bit more painting in the next episode but not very much in the next episode uh, i'm going to be doing the decals and the transfers putting them all on the wings and whatever So what you're going to need is your decal sheet. You'll remember from the first episode we've already used one, but this time we're going to put the rest of them on. So the first thing I'm going to do with these is cut them out. Just using a pair of scissors I'm going to cut them into more manageable sections. Some of them I'll keep together, like the round doors here. I won't bother separating them, I'll keep them together and do both of them at the same time, just for speed. There we go, get them off like that. And I'll probably do those all in one go. And I will do those. I'll cut that one off because that needs to go on the other side. And the red bars for the guns. There we go. So now that we've cut them out, I just need to remember that um, these are not stickers, as I said in the first episode, you can't peel them off and stick them on. We need to do something else to them. So I filled up my little pot with some warm water, not too hot, just warm enough. If they're too hot, you run the risk of causing your decals to shrivel up and sort of melt because they're sort of, they're made of plastic, so they will melt. And you will need a little bit of kitchen paper as well. So get your model in front of you and then let's do the ones on the wings first. Those are usually the easiest ones to do. So we dip them in the water. You see the paper starts to shrivel up. Give it a couple of seconds and then take them out and pop them on your paper. And over time they will start to release from the backing paper. Now if you haven't got any decal fix like me um, then you can just use the water. Just replace every step I use the decal fix with, with water. But the reason why I'm going to use this decal fix is because what it will do is soften the transfers and make them look like they were painted on rather than sort of stuck on as bits of plastic. There are other decal solutions out there that you can use if you've got them around. 
but if you haven't, water will do just fine. You might find that the, the transfers don't soften down as much, but you know they, they will go on all right, especially these Airfix one because Airfix uses cartograph decals and they are absolutely fantastic. So they've now released from the backing paper. That didn't take long at all. I haven't edited this bit. This bit is all in one take. So they, you know, that wasn't a long time at all to wait for that to, to slide off. It doesn't take long. Position them in place. And now you're going to need to move them around and make sure that they line up with the correct locations as per the instructions. So I need to get the instruction box put it next to me here and I need to make sure that they line up correctly so this one here on this wing is more or less in the right place you can use a bit more water to help free it I've put some decal fix underneath which is going to help it stick down but we're going to just move it around a little bit if the decals are small you can use a toothpick to very carefully move them around or some tweezers but be careful you don't rip your transfers. You don't want that to happen. That'd be very bad. They do become quite fiddly if you do that. So that's central there. That probably could come in a touch. Like that. What do we reckon? That's pretty central, isn't it? You can use a cotton bud just to soak up that excess water and also just roll it over the top. Just gently push your transfer down if you need to. Oh, careful though, careful you don't move it. Like that, oh, too much. Just give it a gentle tap, just push it down. And then you leave them to dry. I am, though, as I'm using decal fits, going to apply just a little bit more onto the top, just to help soften them. So we'll give that a little while to settle down onto the surface. So the next ones we're going to do, uh, as we're on the top of the wings, we might as well do these red flashes, the red banners, the red, um, what are they? They cover, they cover the gun ports. So the gun ports are these bits here on the front where the guns are. And during the Second World War, the RAF would coat the outside of these gun ports with a a sort of fabric-y, canvas -y sticker, a red sticker. And the whole point of that was to stop the foreign objects, you know, like uh, dust, bits of twigs and stuff, anything that could be kicked up in the air, from entering those gun ports and causing them to block the guns. And they would then jam and then they wouldn't be able to use them. So this just protects them from doing that. There we go, so put them on. And then obviously the uh, guns can fire through fabric, that's not a problem at all. So we'll just carefully position them over the guns and push them down. There we go, that's more or less right. With the top of the wings done now, we're going to flip over and do the bottoms. I'm going to use a couple of paint pots just to help support the wings. Just on the tips. There we go. And we're going to put on our other round doors. These ones are slightly different. They've got white bits in the middle. And we're just going to repeat the process. Dip them in the water, over there. Put them on our paper towel. Get some of the setting solution. Pop the setting solution into the right place. And then when the transfers are ready, there we go, take them off, slide it into place. Move it around a little bit so it's in the right place where does this one need to go sort of go central like that one two three one more one more over four so it goes there like that quite close to the wing tips actually on these so we'll get some more solution and do the other side as well so what I was counting there it's like the ribs from the end of the ailerons so it's one, two, three, four. The edge of the round door should be on this one here. One, two, three, four. On that one there. Slide you up, come on. There we go. And then it should be in the right place. It should be symmetrical now. So just like before, a little bit of uh, decal fix on the top. 
and we are good to move on to the next ones. Obviously be careful when you're moving your model around now because if you're not careful, like I've done here, I've knocked this red one on the left wing or the right wing as it is so I need to push that back. If you don't notice that you've done that and it sticks, it dries in that position, then it will be there forever then, more or less. I forgot that we hadn't done everything on the top wing surfaces so we'll do those ones now. So yeah, the ones we forgot to do, we've got the black walkways this is where the these are like anti-slip pads which go on next to the cockpit which allow the pilot and and crew to maintain the aircraft and, and you know so you can climb into it. oh i've twisted that one so don't do this you can see i've folded that one over be super careful if you do that and you just need a little bit of gentle care to stop it from being folded over and then let's just push those into place. They should be in line up here. Keep going, come on, a bit further. So they are in the right places now. And then the last thing, the yellow square. Now you might be wondering what the yellow square is for. Why, why is there a yellow square? In the very early days of World War II, it was feared that the Germans were going to use um, chemical warfare just like in the First World War. So not a lot of memories there about the pain of the First World War. And the RAF placed these yellow squares, these are detector paper squares, they've got a chemical on them. And if a chemical agent is detected, this will change color and it won't be yellow anymore. So the pilot would know whether he needed to put a gas mask on just by looking out on his wing and seeing whether that was still yellow or not. So when he lands back at base, or wherever he had to land, he would look at that, go, it's still yellow, I can get out and I don't need to put my face mask on. On this side of the model, we've got the longer decal with the round all and the letters on. It needs a little bit of a longer soak because it's so big, but it's got a lot of clear film behind these letters and that's what I was worried could silver in time on a matte surface, so that's why I gave it the satin surface. Also, decal fix that I'm applying now should help avoid that. So let's see, is this room ready to come off yet? It is, yeah, good. So we're gonna get that on and then we're gonna move it around just like with all the other ones. Okay, watch out, watch out you don't twist over. It's not quite in the right place there. Might be easier just to move it with my thumb. Nope, need some more water. The decal fix does work quite quickly to sort of stick it down. It's slanty at the moment and I need it to not be slanty. There we go, and I've got a bit of twist in there. Let's get that out like that. And I think that is now in position. The K should be just behind where the cockpit canopy would be sitting. So yes, that seems to be in more or less the right place. Now the next bit that needs to go on there is the registration of the aircraft. So we'll get that one soaked in the warm water. It didn't take long to release at all. Small ones never take long to release. And then we'll pop it on and it goes about there, I think. And we'll just do our final movement just to get it on. Oh, it might be right first time near enough. Right there, I'd say. That's close enough. And then when these have started to dry, we'll put some more decal fix on. So we're coming towards the end of the decals, actually. There's only two more sheets to do. So we'll do these ones. These are sort of like identification marks. They go on the tail. These are quite large, actually. Uh, not, not many aircraft have them that large. They tend to have them smaller uh, in the RAF. I guess they were sort of showing off, being a bit flamboyant. So those go on the tail up here. Another good thing about these cartograph decals is they're normally shaped perfectly so that there's like nothing excess hanging over the areas you don't want it to be hanging over. And if, if your decals are a bit larger than the area they're going on, then something like decal fix will really help them sort of fold around the edges. So it's, it's quite a good product. 
It's not my favourite product, I do use other ones, but you'll have to take a look at my other videos to see which ones I use. The problem with using your thumb is you run the risk of it sticking to your thumb. But sometimes it's just the quickest and easiest way of doing it. There we go, I'd say that's in the right place. Bit of decal fix on the top, just to help soften it down. And there's only one more transfer to put on now, so this is the penultimate one. No, not penultimate, the ultimate one. Penultimate means just before last, doesn't it? So we'll soak that one, get that one ready to go. This one's got the registration code for the aircraft already mixed in because they painted over the top of it when they put the registration um, or the identification letters on. So decal fix on the side, just like before. There we go. Right, we need a bit of uh, manipulation to get it in the right place. We'll slide that down. Come on, down you come. Normally, the two roundels on either side, they sort of match up perfectly with each other, so if they don't quite match up, I normally just slide them together to make sure that they do, and then that needs to be lifted up to make it more level. And I'd say we're there. I will go and put some more decal fix over the top of the transfers, just to help them soften after the water has dried. You might be able to notice that this, this transfer here, this decal, is starting to shrivel up a little bit. That's normal. They, they tend to do that a little bit when you've used something like Decal Fix or another setting solution. They don't tend to do it that much when you just use water, but they should settle down onto the uh, surface details. So it's probably ready for some more Decal Fix, actually. So all I'm going to do is just take a small amount. It just has to be enough to brush over the top to make it wet and that should just really help it settle down into those details and make it look like it was painted on. When you're at this stage now and all your transfers are on just leave your model alone. Don't be tempted to do the next step or uh, mess about with it because it just takes one stray finger to nudge it out of position one of your, one of your transfers or you know, it could come off on your finger and you don't realize and then you've ruined it, you've, you've destroyed that one. So just leave it alone. Go and do something else for an hour or two until they have completely dried and they're not moving anymore. If you are using a solution like me, you might want to come back and reapply it if you're finding that they're not settling down into the surface details as much as you'd like but hopefully this won't take too long. So it's been about an hour since I uh, last looked at the model and you'll probably be able to notice that despite the fact I said don't be tempted to mess around with it because you'll lose a transfer, you'll notice that I have lost a transfer. I've lost the, uh, the red one here. I don't know how I managed to do that, but I have. I don't know where it's gone. Could be anywhere, it could, have, it could have been stuck to my hand and then when I've washed my hands, it's gone down the drain. So what I'm going to do is very carefully try and remove the other one because I've got a plan. I've got a plan to fix this, he says. So very carefully going to remove the one on the other side. So the decal fix has already started to melt these onto the surface, so they've got to be super careful. There we go. So I have no idea where the other one has gone, but I'm going to paint the red on there instead. What I've got here is Humbrol 60. It's a, a red carmine color. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to thin it down a touch just as before. This time I'll just thin it with a bit of water. I will just very carefully, it's probably too wet actually, paint on a rectangle as neatly as I can. So this is a prime example in if you have a problem there is a solution. Okay so I'm gonna admit that I cheated a little bit. I've actually put some tape around uh, the red areas because I just was struggling to get a nice square rectangle. A square rectangle? A nice neat rectangle uh, with my hand. So I've put a bit of tape around it and I'm gonna put a couple of coats of this red over the top just to uh, get it going. Just like that. There we go, hopefully this works out all right. 
There we go. So despite that being potentially a catastrophic error on my part, I think I've managed to successfully avoid the problem. I've, I've, I've found a solution. And it looks okay. Probably could have painted it on to start with, to be honest. There we go. So at this point, you might be able to notice that the transfers have indeed sort of melted into the surface and they do look like they're painted on now. Um, it's been, I don't know, probably about two hours I've left this alone to sort of do its thing. But you'll notice that the decal fix has left like little glossy marks on the model. So the very last thing we're going to do is get our satin varnish back out and give it a very quick coat, just like we did before, using some water. I've got some water in there. And the whole point of this is to give a uniform surface for anything we might want to do after this. At the very least, this should help to protect these transfers that we've applied. It's going to create a protective paint layer over the top. So in the future, well, they, they won't be removable at this point now. If you decided like later on, if you wanted to use some other decal removal solutions, it just, they just wouldn't work because you've effectively sealed them into the surface of the model. And that's pretty much it for this episode. So today we managed to put all of our decals on to our model and they've, they've gone all right. I had a bit of an error with those ones there, but uh, now we've sealed them in with our final layer of varnish. I'm gonna put this to one side to dry and that will have us ready for the next episode where I'm going to be adding the rest of the parts to the model. So hopefully the next episode we will be finishing the model. So the first thing I'm going to do is get some glue back on the model. So if you remember from the beginning of the build, we've been using the poly cement that came as part of the set, for the most part anyway. And I've been using a toothpick to get it in the right places. And it cements into a hole here and onto the support arm here bit of glue there and you'll remember that these have already been painted when uh, I did the painting episode so they are silver oh hang on we've got to go through we've got to go through the braces that are already there like that oh come on it's a bit fiddly isn't it there we go go through push that one down and then that's got to go into its little hole there like that there we go in you go there's another supporting arm for this, for the landing gear, which goes from here to here. So we'll get some glue in those locations as well. Got to be really careful when you place the glue now, because we've got all this paint and all these decals on, and we don't want to run the risk of ruining all that work we've already put in. And that goes on there, like that. So this is quite a fiddly part, so I'm going to use my tweezers. I'm at the wrong angle here for the camera, well for me. There we go, and it goes like that. And this is a really well designed kick that just like snaps together. There it is. So now that we've done that, we've got to do the other side. Um, first passing it through there. Come on, there you go. And then popping it into place there. And then pushing that into its little hole. Come on, in you go. There you go, there we go, that's in there now. And then the next bit is to add the supporting piece. Bit of cement on there, and then that goes in there, like that, and it pops into place there. Cool, with that done, let's add the landing gear covers, just a bit of glue on the, uh, on the legs. And then you need to make sure you put the right one in the right place. So that should go on like that. There you go, there you go. So now we'll do the other side, exactly the same. 
There we go. Give it a couple of minutes to dry and then we'll move on to the next bit. And the next bit is adding the wheels. And they do have a flat bit on, so you need to make sure you get them on the right way round. The flat bit of the tyre sort of represents the wheel under the weight, it's sort of compressing. There we go. With that done, let's flip it over and pop in our engine exhausts in the nose. So once again, we're going to get some glue on our stick, rub it along the inside of there, and then carefully insert our pre-painted exhaust. The thing with modelling is it can be quite therapeutic, I find. It's easy to lose hours and hours into an activity like this. Sometimes you just don't realise that you've been doing it for like six hours. You think it's been like ten minutes. There we go. Engine exhaust in. Whilst we're working at the front of the nose, we might as well add the propeller assembly we did in a previous episode. So once again, run a little bit of glue around the inside of the open nose there. Just a little bit though, you don't want to run the risk of it actually gluing the propeller in place and then we just push it in. I think the next bit is the clear part. So I need my clear fix. Like I said in the very early episodes, if you are gluing clear parts in, you'll want to use a slightly different product than the poly cement that you've got in the kit. If you don't have anything else um, than, than the poly cement that you've got in the kit, then you know, you, you'll have to use that. But even PVA glue or um, like normal general purpose clear glue will work. So I just take a little bit on a cocktail stick again. This does leave strings, so you've got to be careful not to get those strings everywhere. And then I'm going to run it along the edges where the various clear parts are going to go. So we're going to go there and around the nose bit here. Oh, missed a bit there, let's just wipe that off. This should dry completely clear, so you shouldn't see it at, at the end. And it's not, it doesn't dry instantly either, so you do get a tiny amount of time to move things around if you need to. So that goes on like that, not quite, like that, sort of. I can fiddle with that in a minute. Canopy, as in windshield, windshield goes on like that, there we go. And I am going to put a bit of glue between the two of them so that they stay together. So I'll run a bit of glue around the edge like that. Right, now let's see if I can get them all lined up properly. A bit fiddly. There we go, I think I've done it. Any little bits that are missing paint, you can go back over and add a bit of paint if you need to. There we go, that's on there, nice. There are some clear parts that go in the little slots in the wings. These are landing lights. So again, select the correct one, add a bit of glue in those little hollows, and then pop it in. It's got sort of a lip on it, so you should get it the right way round. There we go. Get it nice and lined up. Let's get rid of that. There we go. So that one's in. One more to do. Just going to repeat the exact same process. Bit of glue in the in that little hollow there, in the little slot. The light in. Easier said than done. There we go. That's a good fit, wasn't it? I haven't had any fit issues really with this. And that, in essence, is your build complete. I don't think we've missed any parts. I think we've got them all, they're all on there. So if at this moment now, your model looks something like this, it's finished. Well, as far as the uh, Airfix instructions will take you, that's it. But I think we might do 
a few extra bits and pieces. The first thing I'm going to do is use this Humbrol Satin 123 Extra Dark Sea Grey uh, enamel paint to make an enamel wash. I know I'm not a big fan of enamel paints, but I do quite like making my own enamel wash. Obviously, if you don't have these paints, you could do this with the Black 33 uh, acrylic that was included, but it's not going to be as good. It doesn't flow quite the same. So there are um, different products out on the market which you can do, which you can get in order to do that with. But um, this is the method I quite like doing at the moment. So I'm taking the satin and I'm going to add some of it to a pot. Not very much, I don't need loads. It's quite a dark gray. That might do it. And as I mentioned earlier, you can't thin enamels with water. You have to use white spirit. So I'm gonna use some white spirit and thin it down and make it into a wash, a really thin version of itself, a really thin paint. I do have a tutorial um, on my channel explicitly explaining this type of wash if you wanted to go and have a look. Cool, so with that done, I've got this really thin, really thin paint now. And um, what I'm going to do is very carefully, oh, about knocking everything everywhere. It's very carefully, let's zoom in a bit. So there's not very many panel lines on this aircraft because it is primarily supposed to be fabric covered, but the ones that are, are going to get a little bit, there we go, you can see it running into the gaps. A little bit of this wash. Probably had too much on my brush to start with there. But don't worry because I've got my cotton bud and I'll just dab off the excess stuff. If you go in the direction of airflow, it can help to add a little bit of um, sort of weathering. It looks like oil streaks. And then there's some more up here, which could do with uh, a bit of wash. I normally use a black, but a lot of people have been complaining about how it looks, I mean, it looks nice in my opinion, but it's a bit too vibrant. But perhaps the uh, the gray isn't vibrant enough. It's just, I mean, it's, it's working. It could probably do with being slightly darker, but it's all right. I think you can see it. it. Does give a bit of contrast. It's not. It's not like in your face. Hey, look at me. I'm a panel line. You know. It's a lot more subdued than that, which is quite nice. I think the place where the wash is going to stand out the most is on the lighter colour underneath. Applying a dark wash onto dark colours doesn't really bring it out, but here you can see it's standing out which is nice. So we'll just run it into these, these lines here. That's coming up a treat on there. Just around these details as well, help to bring them out. So the underside would probably be a little bit grimier because it's such a light color. Those are your bullet ejector holes there the, uh, for the casings. So the spent casings would come out of these holes here. So it's worth catching them if you can. And as mentioned, there's a little bit of excess wash there which I don't really want, so I'm just going to very gently remove it with this cotton bud, which has been, well, it's had a little bit of white spirit added to it, just enough to move the excess wash away. You don't want to leave it too long to do this because the, uh, the wash could really dry and then it'll be quite stubborn to remove but a couple of minutes in, after it started to dry, just in the direction of airflow. And there we go, nice and clean. Just remove any excess, anything that you don't really want there. Don't do too much though, because um, although I've never experienced it strip the acrylic paint, I have heard other people have had trouble with it. So I would hate if you did or did this, you put too much white spirit on and it just ripped off your uh, your acrylic. I'd hate for that to happen. So just a little bit light and sparing, removing the excess. 
Looks all right. Looks pretty good, actually. The I do have a full build of the Hawker Hurricane. This exact kit, actually. Um, but I think my techniques were slightly different at the time. So it would be interesting to compare that. So if you've if you've enjoyed this series, you can always pop over and see how it compares to the last kit I did. Now we're going to do some chipping. So this is just where we simulate that any metal work that's been worn over time, perhaps through maintenance, has uh, become uh, proud from the surface. You can you can sort of see it now because the paint has worn away. So all I'm going to do is get get my silver paint my number 11 which I've been using throughout this build this isn't necessarily the best paint for it I much prefer other products by other brands but I'll see how it turns out so we're just going to add a little bit randomized around the panels which have potentially been moved during maintenance or use so this particular panel I'm doing here this is where the ammunition goes for the guns so this will be removed every time the aircraft comes back from a sortie. So we just put a little bit of uh, silver paint around the edges of that. Not too much, sometimes less is more. But just enough to give the impression that uh, it's being used. You don't want too much on your brush though. You don't want it to look like it's literally a blob of paint. You want it to be sort of randomised. And I sort of pick out some of the edges there seen a bit of wear would be down here because I imagine that this is metal so I'm going to put some little bits of chipping down there and on the walkway as well I'm, I imagine that will get worn over time just, just randomly doesn't have to go crazy just enough to give the impression that it's being used and put some here on the little handle so I imagine that will get worn over time and perhaps a little bit on sort of the runner and the back of the canopy there because imagine that gets worn and I'll do a little bit on this side but I'm not going to put as much on this side give an indication of how it's being used because I think that the pilot enters on this side and the crew sort of help him on this side so we won't go nuts with that we'll just put a few little bits and pieces in a few other little locations just to give the impression that there is a little bit of chipping a little bit of uh, wear and tear on this model now that we've done that and it's looking pretty good I think we need to dull down the shiny surface so what I'm going to do is get this Humbrol Mat 49 it can be a little bit difficult to use this going to give it a good shake if you aren't careful and you don't mix it enough it will leave white residue on the model however I have found that if you either mix it with some hot water or with a little bit of the satin that we used earlier, the 135, it won't leave that white residue. So let's give that a go. So in here I've got some hot water which I'm going to mix it up with. And I think for sanity's sake, a little bit of safety, I will put a drop of the satin varnish in as well. Just to be sure. Just, just for a bit of backup, just to make sure that we don't end up ruining it. Should avoid, that's the point, should avoid the landing lights and the clear parts we've already applied because you don't want to uh, make them not shiny anymore. So just keep clear of those and just brush it on everything else. So we're nearly at the very end of this build. There's only a couple more bits and pieces. I don't know what that is. A couple more bits and pieces that I want to do to this before we call it a day. I mean, all of these bits I'm doing now are like optional extras. You don't have to do these if you don't want to. If you were quite happy to leave your model at the stage earlier when we finished building it, then that is absolutely fine. There's no problem with that. But if you want to go a little bit further and test your skills, this is definitely something that you might want to try. After a couple of applications of that uh, matte varnish, it's now less shiny than it was. I could keep going and make it completely matte, but I quite like it with a slight sheen to it. So what I'm going to do now is move on and add the aerial for uh, the radio. So what I've done is I've stretched some sprue. So this is the this is the sprue, the frame that the um, 
the model came on and I've literally just heated it up and stretched it into a fine wire. For more details on that particular technique, again I have a tutorial on that so have a look for that on my channel. What I'm going to do is cut it to a sort of wire and then I'm going to get my sanding stick and remove a little bit of paint from the edge of the aerial mast. So now I need to glue the plastic wire I've made onto it. A little bit of glue on there and then we take the wire I've just made and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna glue it on like that. And mine's a little bit, my wire is a little bit thick. So if you'd stretched it quicker, it would have um, gone thinner, but it'll be okay for what we need it for. We wait for that to sort of glue in place. And then we're going to repeat the process and add a bit of glue to the top up here. Just a little blob and then we're going to just gently stretch it to make it sort of tight and then pop it on the top. Apply a little bit of pressure and just hold it there whilst the two points glue together. There we go, so I'm going to just snip the excess off there. That's gone, and just make sure that I haven't moved it by accident in doing that. There we go. And then to help it hide or sort of blend in and not be so noticeable because obviously these wires were quite thin in real life, just a quick coat of the matte black paint that came in the set. Just carefully getting that on there. And then we're good to go. And for the final step, I think I'm just going to add a little bit of sort of gun smoke and stuff like that. So this is a soft artist's pastel. And I'm just going to take off a little bit of dust to scrape it off onto this tissue here. There you go, that'll do. Don't need too much. And I'm going to get a dry brush like this, a nice new dry brush. and pick up some of that dust just on the end of the brush and then just streak it back from the directly back from the guns it doesn't have to be over the top just enough to give the impression of smoke do the same on the other side directly back from the guns like that not going over the top And then get a slightly bigger but clean brush and just keep going. Just remove it all off of there. There we go, like that. And the same on this side. Less is more sometimes. Slip over. Repeat the process on the other side. Let's get the other paint pot underneath there. Same again, so there'll be a little bit of gun smoke from here. Not too much, I don't really need loads on that though because this is just where the uh, ejector casings come out so I don't need absolutely tons of that. Just a little bit. And on the wings I think there might be a little bit as well so I've got to find where the guns are. There won't be as much on this end though. Like that, there we go. And then repeat the process. Just streak it back. And I think that there might be an ever so slight amount coming out of the radiator, just just a little bit. Get the dry brush, streak it back, blow off the excess. There we go, just run it all the way back as far as I can get it to go. And we need to do the engine exhausts as well because there definitely will be some there. 
So you pick up some more on the other brush. And the engine exhaust, it sort of goes down with the air flow. The air flow would sort of push it down towards the wings a little bit. Repeat the process on this side. Keep brushing in only one direction. Don't be tempted to move the stuff that falls down onto the wing there. Just give it a blow. Blow it away. And then get the dry brush again and just clean it up a bit. There you go. And I think that we are now done. And there we have it, the completed Airfix 170 second scale Hawker Hurricane Mark 1. Truth be told, this has taken me about 12 hours in total from when I opened the box until um, I put my paintbrush down. And that's including drying time. So realistically, there's probably about six hours worth of work put went into this. Generally, looking at my work here, I'm, uh, I'm quite pleased with it. The paint schemes come out quite neatly. I quite like the weathering that's been applied. A little bit disappointed that I messed up those uh, two decals on the gun ports, but I think my rescue attempt went well. Yeah, it looks quite good if I'm honest. I mean, obviously I'm sure someone will say that, oh, they can do better and, you know, it doesn't look good and I missed out bits and pieces. But to be honest, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. And I had quite a lot of fun doing it, actually. This has been a new experience for me as well, since this is the first series I've done this. The kit as it stands is quite a good kit to build. The fit of the parts was really, really good. There is a good amount of detail. I didn't find it too difficult. So if you've picked this one up as a starter set, you should definitely give it a go. But anyway, let me know down in the comments, what did you think of my build? Did you think it was a good build? Did you learn anything from it? Are there perhaps some new uh, products that you might feel like trying? And be honest, did you actually build this along with me? If you're on my Discord or you follow me on Instagram, I'd be interested to see your finished hurricanes. Or maybe you just learned something new. So feel free to let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more things like this, please make sure that you're subscribed and click that like button to feed that YouTube algorithm. As always, a shout out to my patrons and channel members over on Patreon and here on YouTube for the generous support they give my channel. To find out more about how you can get involved, take a look at the links in the description. Finally, all that's left to say is a massive thank you to you for watching this one, and I'll see you on the workbench again next time.